In this video, we're going to start talking about grid snapping. Now, if you're not familiar with snapping in a computer term, basically what it means is you're going to have your grid and every time you move an object, instead of freely moving around, it's going to instantly shift or snap to a certain increment. So say if we set our snapping value to five, every time you move your object, it's going to move by five units instead of all the small little increments. Now this is very good for grid based games or tile based games because we have a set size. So let's play around and see how this actually works. So what we're going to start doing is playing around with some objects. We already have our background. So in our project folder here, we have our Kenny platformer pack and under PNG, we have ground. So now we have a few different options here. We have dirt, grass, you can pick whichever you want. For this example, I'm gonna use grass. And now these are tiles or basically little blocks that we use to build our objects. So let's take this one right here, this first one. If I drag this in, now we have it here and it's in the middle. Don't worry about placement or anything right now. We'll, we'll clean this up later and we'll make everything look proper but we have this little block or tile, if you want to call it. Now, if we start moving it, see how it moves freely wherever I want. And I have weird numbers here. So like 0.97. When we're dealing with tiles or grid based games like this, we don't want to have partial numbers. We want to have whole numbers. So I'm going to set this back to zero. So what I wanted to happen is when I move this object, instead of moving it freely like this with partial numbers, I want it to instantly move to the next little grid position here. So the center of my little tile should be at the center of this grid position. If we look, it's 1.02, so it's not exact. If we type one, now it's exact. But we want it to move like that automatically. So let's put it back to zero. Now, if you look up at the top of the scene view here, there's this little icon with a magnet and a grid. And that's the icon. You're gonna see that in a lot of programs, not just Unity, where it's a little magnet. That's usually the, the kind of universal symbol for snapping. So if we mouse over this one, notice I can't click it. If I mouse over, it says toggle grid snapping on and off, available when you set the tool handle rotation to global. Now, we haven't talked about any of that. That's a bit more of a complex topic. That's going to come later. But for right now, if you see this message, look over to this icon here. And if you click the down arrow, you have two options, global or local. If you're on local, let's just change this to global. And now we have this icon available. And don't worry about what this means for now. You are going to learn and understand this later. So we're not ignoring it. It's just, it makes sense to cover later. Okay, so we can turn this icon on. And now that I turned it on, let's see what happens. If I start moving my block, notice it instantly snaps to the next grid space. So it's moving one unit at a time. And if I move it up and down, it's gonna do the same thing here. Or if I do like diagonal, so it's always going to snap to a whole number. You can see it's at two. Now, say if our objects were bigger or a weird size and we needed to set this specifically, you can click this little down arrow next to it here and it gives you grid size. So this is what size of grid it's going to snap to. So if I set this to say 2.5, notice the grid changed. And now if I select my grass object, if I start moving it, it's moving by 2.5 instead of the one unit. So we don't actually want that. Let's go back and change that back to one. Okay. And now we can move and our object moves freely like this. Okay. So we have grid snapping on. So if we move our objects around, it's going to move by one unit at a time. So Let's duplicate this object a few times. So if I select grass on the left side here in the hierarchy, I can hold control D on the keyboard for duplicate. And now we have a second one. So when it duplicates, it's right on top of the first one. So we can't see it, but if I have it selected here, if I click and move, now it's going to snap over to the side. So now we notice when we're moving it, they're not lining up correctly here. 
So if I move it, you can see the grid size is not matching what our objects are. And this is where I showed you how we can change the size. So when we're moving it over here, it doesn't quite match. So let's do this. Let's move both of these objects back to zero on the X. So select this one, X zero, go to the first grass, zero. Now they're both on top of here, each other here. I'm going to select the second one and I'm going to move it over to see how far I need to move it. Okay, so every time I move, I'm going to need it to be a bit bigger. So if we know if moving it to one isn't enough here and we need just a bit more, what we could do is we could turn snapping off and we could move it freely to see. So if I move it, it looks like, oh, it's about 1.25. So let's try that. Let's turn our snapping on. Let's go to 1.25. And now let's start moving. Okay, so now they actually do match up here. So that's just one way we can fix this. There is ways we can change the size of our sprites, and we're going to do that later as well. But for right now, I, I want to focus on snapping because this is something we're going to use a lot. So now we have this working where they move correctly, but notice these two objects don't really line up. So if we move them away from each other and we look, they have rounded corners, these don't quite line up. So we can tell basically right here that these two objects aren't intended to go right next to each other. So let's just delete both of these here. And now let's look at the different options we have here. So if we want to see these as bigger icons, the slider bar at the bottom here will increase the size. So we can kind of eyeball looking at them here. If we look, notice this one has a rounded corner on the left. So you can tell this is kind of intended to be the left edge of a platform or a ledge. And then if we look at this one, this one has hard corners on each side. And then this one has rounded corner on the right. A lot of the time you have to kind of figure out which tiles go where, but the designer, if they design it correctly, should make it very obvious. So in this case, Kenny is very experienced at this. These assets are pretty obvious. Let's drag in the first one. Okay, so we have this left looking corner and it's at all zeros for the position. Let's drag in this middle one. And now they're right on top of each other, so we don't see it. But since our snapping is 1.25, if we move to the right, notice they line up now. And now what if we wanted to add the right side? Let's add this one in and let's move this guy over here. And now we have a right path. So if we look at it, we have rounded edge on the right, rounded edge on the left, and we have a little platform. Now, say if we wanted to make it a bigger platform, we could take the right section. Let's move that over here and say we want two in the middle. So what we could do is we can select this grass mid. And if you look, the names actually already imply what they are. So grass left, grass mid, grass right. And you can see them here as well. So let's duplicate grass mid, control D, move it over one. Now let's hit control D on that one, duplicate it again and move it over one more. And now if we look at this, we have a floating platform here. So the size doesn't quite match our background yet. That's, that's fine, but we have this platform and now we know how we can change the size to be any size we want. And this is how common platformer games are created. So any of your classics, like all the Super Mario Brothers, Sonic, all of those games are tile based games. Now, before we move on to the next video, just like we did with the background, let's make an object that is going to put this platform under it as well. So I'm going to right click in here and create empty. Or as I showed on the shortcuts, you could hit control shift N on your keyboard. Okay. I'm going to call this platform. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it since we have, how many pieces do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have 
five. I'm going to call it one by five. And what that means is I'm just doing this as my own personal naming, but it means it's one tile high and five tiles wide, just so we know what the size is. Now notice here my position is just these weird numbers. Let's click the three dots here and select reset on transform. And that's going to zero it out. So now it's at the center. We can select all five of our objects here. I'm going to drag them into our platform one by five. And now the reason it's really good to always take new objects and put them at zero position like I did is this example here. If I didn't do that, this parent object, the platform one by five would be at those weird numbers still. So if we were to move it around in our game, we wouldn't be able to select easily where it goes or use the snapping very well. But now we have it, it's at zero, zero, zero. And now I can just start moving the platform and it's gonna move accordingly. So if I move it one to the left, it's gonna be the negative 1.25 and so on. Okay, so now we have it grouped where we can just do this and say, if we wanted two platforms, now we could select this one here Hit control D to duplicate. And now we have a whole new separate one by five platform. Okay, so I'm just gonna move these just like this for now. And one thing just to be careful, if you start moving the objects, you wanna make sure you have the parent selected, the, the top one. Because say if I wanna move the first platform, this one here, and if I have this selected instead, I'm only gonna move that one piece. So we want the top part here. And you can click these little arrows to show or hide everything under it. But if I select the first platform, now I can just move it like this. Okay, so we have two platforms here. So for practice, what I would suggest is try making a couple platforms yourself and grouping them like I did in the hierarchy here. Try going about that on your own, pick some different tiles to use and just play around and experiment. And then if you do have trouble or anything, you can delete that object that you made and just start again with that new platform. And if you still struggle, just watch this video again. You can see how I did it here. So give that some practice. And I highly suggest doing that before you move on to the next video. And then we're going to keep learning.